The Orange run out of players and steam in a double overtime thriller against the Knolls in Tallahassee, dropping them to a disappointing 1-4 in the ACC. That's four straight now. We'll give you our thoughts on that game. Plus, Joe tells us what to look forward to against Pittsburgh back at the Dome Sweet Dome Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Let's go. All right, what's up, Q's Nation? Thanks for tuning in to episode 51 of the Q's Nation podcast with Sean and Joe. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Any major podcast platform, you can find us there. So I am Sean, alongside my good buddy Joe. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's up, Sean? How you doing? All right. Well, um, so much happened. It was like a game and a half, literally. Yeah. Uh, to go over, a lot happened. A lot happened in the presser. But I first, I guess, uh, I would start with this. So, um, you know, if 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 you win the game, if you win the game, you look at getting to shoot thirty out of thirty-eight free throws making 79% of them. We hit 30 out of 38. Um, if we win, you look at that and you say, you know, that that's why we won. But we didn't win. And we finally got back to the free throw line, and it helped tremendously. But we lost. So what I've got to look to, Joe, in my opinion, is 19 turnovers. Uh, I think it was, yeah, it was about 9 or 10 in the first third of the game, in the first 10 minutes. Um, so, uh, man, you know, when you, when you look back on the game and I was thinking about it afterwards and I'm like, you know, they didn't do a ton wrong and Brissette missed a shot. Um, you know, this is, you know, he did that before in the game and he had a wide open three. He missed it. Um, there was a couple things at the rim that could have went in. Uh, the first overtime was, was really tight and going into the second overtime, um, you know, they actually kind of started to pull away after uh, Chukwu f- heading over the back foul on a rebound, and um, that was pretty much it. Sent uh, Angola to the line. He made his free throws, and then that was a two-possession edge, and ever, si- ever, ever since that happened, from that point on, they were just trying to play catch-up a little bit, and it didn't, uh, it didn't pan out. So this, this was, too, the... Um, the first multiple overtime game since the six against UConn. Quick little tidbit. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, um, and, you know, you could look into um, Florida State cashing in on 31 points off of those 19 turnovers, too. And, you know, to our 12 against their 15 turnovers. So that's yeah. huge. That's huge. Uh, what do you think, Joe? What do you, what do you think? What could you point to? Well, I thought it was a hard-fought game. Um, what I was looking at, uh, obviously, turnovers. Uh, when I look at turnovers, a lot of times, I mean, yeah, we had 19. They had 15. So um, you just like to win that, you know. It doesn't really matter to me personally what the number is. But obviously, we lost that. So that has something to do with it. But we got out uh, out rebound, 50 to 43. And they were plus eight on the offensive boards compared to us and just looking back at just the numbers period, uh, they ended up putting up 15 more shots than us. So in a tight game like that, where, uh, they got some extra chance points and, uh, hit some timely threes some timely deep threes. Uh, you just can't, I mean, that's to me, that's really the, <laughs> the difference. Yeah. When you talk, I mean, you talk about going into the double overtime. So two different times it was close and I mean, it's just tough not to look back at that. I mean, we had the free throws. They had a lot of free throws, but 15 more shots than us they got. And that, that right there, to me, was the uh, the key to the game. They turned to why those. they ended up winning that. Yeah. And then, like you said, we had three guys fall out, and then we started, you know, running out of legs. And they're a little bit deeper of a team than us. So the uh, the turnover or the um, 
the extra rebounds they grabbed turned into 25 second chance points for yeah. Florida State. Um, that's, that's killer. It's killer. And, you know, Tyus Battle and Frank Howard, they struggled in the first half, in the first 10 minutes. So they should first third, really. Um, yeah. They struggled. Uh, they were three for 16 for a combined seven points. Battle, though, you know, like you said, a hard fought game, and he just went off. Career high, 37 points. Um, Syracuse, and you look at the paper, and this, you know, what you said is is exactly right. That's the worst of it. But everything else, other than that, is decent. 38, I mean, 38.8% from the floor, 47% from behind the arc, 38% from behind the arc since ACC play started. That's yeah. That's huge. Remember, they shot like 15% from behind the arc one one game. Um, and then free throws, they're still killing it. You gotta get, it's, it's crucial to get to the line. It's one of the only things that held us, uh, kept us in this game. Um, and, you know, uh, like you said, the, 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 um, the, the offensive rebounds that FSU was grabbing, you know, 25 extra points off of those. And what, tell, me, <laughs> tell me what you thought about uh, Howard Washington's what did he play? He played, um, what, 24? 24 minutes. Yeah, 24 minutes. Um, yeah, that was kind of a key, too, was Howard falling out so early. I mean, yeah. you look at his you look at his stat line, and, I mean, he still had 36 minutes, and he followed out in regulation and went into double overtime. So him him following out was kind of key in my mind. Yeah. If he stays, if he stays in, then uh, I just – he just offers more than, than Howard Washington. I thought Howard Washington played good – for you know what I expected from him, um, he didn't do but, t- terrible. I mean, he's not used to playing twenty four minutes. Right, he went three for four. Uh, yeah, no, he made some good plays, and he needs to be able to get that experience because there are going to be times in games like this where we're going to have to rely on him to come in and be confident enough to make plays. So, it wasn't awful, you know. And, and Tallahassee going down there, it's a tough place to play. You know, going into the game prior to us, Florida State had a 28 home winning streak, and uh, Louisville snapped that. So, again, like I said, I thought they had a little bit of motivation. Their best player, man, uh, he was in concussion protocol. He didn't even play, so I thought we had a good chance in the southern beginning of the game. And then they had another one of their guys that were making, uh, what was it, Savoy, I think, making those threes, making outside shots. He got hurt. So, but they just figured it out. They got the right guys in the middle of the zone to make the right plays. Um, and that that big tall center there, uh, Kambali or whatever his name was, he he had a Kamaji. career. Night. Yeah, he had a career night as well, and twenty three points, eight rebounds. Um, so, I mean, they they definitely were picking apart the zone. And like again, I said they hit timely threes, and like what you said, they had twenty five points off of uh, second chance points. So um, that right there is going to be the difference when we play a team like that away on the road. Um, Just a deeper bench. You mentioned um, in the pregame to uh, Florida State, you mentioned how many how many rotations they get. And I know that we had, um, uh, you know, a couple players out. Well, one player out, really, and then and then um, someone left early. But still, they, they he still played. Um, Let's see, eight guys that nine, had at least 14 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Played nine guys total, and I mean, their best player was out, so he would have been up there as well. So he, they probably would have been nine players over 12 minutes, 10 minutes. Um, they were definitely deeper, and they had the legs. Tyus Battle was exhausted at the oh, end of the game, and that's was. what I think was the biggest key was Frank Howard. He's going to make some good plays, make some bad plays, and who knows if he doesn't go off and maybe help the scoring. But uh, just the fact that Battle had to, to bring the ball up and, and – uh, he was basically carrying the load the whole way. You know, it wasn't just him getting the ball and shooting. Like he was bringing the ball up. He was playing D, and he was getting exhausted. Uh, I thought a couple other keys were, I mean, like you said, turnovers. But those two times that we got the ten second calls because we couldn't get oh, it past half yeah, court. Yeah, I mean, stuff like that is just killer. I, I so. think that was if he would have known. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if he was. You know, you you count that in your head. There's no. You can't look around. There's no clock for that. So well, no. So, so he just lack of self awareness on that. Those were just vital mistakes, and he did it twice. And 
Well, yeah, at that point, when you see that the guy is struggling, you got to have players kind of run to the yeah, ball. Gotta have, he's got to look open. up to, yeah. to pass the ball over the line. They exactly. both, I mean, they got to be. So, you know, and you never know because maybe that had something to do with you know, the exhaustion, had something to do with that as well. You know, you start getting tired, you start making mental mistakes. And yep. It's uh, just the longer we don't, our team's not built to go into overtimes like that. So, no, not when you're playing, you know, seven guys. I mean, it, well, we, yeah. we, we had, you know, it's so it's so we had bear in there for two seconds so but you know we're just not that deep and we're not that deep uh for a number of reasons uh any final thoughts on fsu hard fought game i i i wish we would have had it It it's one of those ones uh that you could say in the last four games i think that um we let slip um over some some small mistakes and they did a lot of things right but they just did a couple things uh if they would have done a couple things better i should say they didn't do really anything wrong but if they could have done a couple things better um we take that game at the end of the first overtime at the very at the very worst case scenario yeah and you gotta hope i mean from what i've heard the uh the ncaa committee they've changed their criteria um as far as certain different things and they've actually made a uh a system to uh, what type of games as far as tier games um, that you play against. And every team is based upon a tier, whether it's home, whether it's away and what they're ranked and like the BPI and stuff. So I was reading about it the other day. I'm still not uh, that well versed in it, so I'm not going to get into depth with it, but uh, they look at stuff like that and they look at stuff at uh, like how close the games are home and away, stuff like that. So this is by means, you know, not a bad loss. Uh, Right. But, you know, it's getting old saying it's not a bad loss, not yeah. a bad loss. Yeah. When now we're, well, we drifted to what, 12 and 6? So, yeah. I looked at the bracketology today. I mean, obviously, it's so far away, so many games to be played, but Joe Lenardi still has us in as a 10 seed. So, um, but you never really know what's going to happen with that stuff. <laughs> still a long time to go, but we're not out of it. We just got to get a. We got to get some wins here, and I think we got a nice little four-game stretch that can uh, that can allow us to get some wins, uh, get some W's, and get some confidence. So, um, well, coach had a, a kind of um, a kind of you know a very Jim Beheim esque press conference. Uh, he opened up with a with a couple little things, but this is what stuck. Here's a piece of audio. Coach, at what point does a I mean? For any team, it's you know now one four in the league. We stop talking about this. Five games. Who cares? You got a whole season. You got 13 games to go. Anything can happen. Who cares? It's it okay. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You play the next game. We had a tough start. I explained that. We had three tough road games. And if we had lost them by 10 or 12, I'd be really worried. We could have won. We had a really good chance to win two of the three, and the other ones at Virginia. And the last I looked, there are two or three in the country. Um, he makes a couple good points. You know, I think it's more of a, that's a that's a you know he hates that um, that reporters ask these questions and the media ask these questions, and I I understand that, but they're asking that was a legitimate question that fans are are wondering about. You know, um, is it time to to flip out? But when you go back and you look. We started the year we went to the Final Four. We started out zero and four, and we ended up going nine and nine, and we made it to the Final Four. So, Joe, um, I believe that this was a. I I just said it. I'll say it again. I I think we should have had this win. Um, you don't think it hurts us? I don't particularly think any of the losses, and like you said, it sucks. It's not a bad loss. I hate saying that and hate reiterating that point. But I don't think that they hurt us drastically. But we do have to win. I wouldn't say it's panic mode. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. It's still kind of early. But uh, we gotta. We gotta step it up. Syracuse yeah. has got to step it up. And uh, Jim Beheim had went on and said that you know it's a young team. Joe, you've mentioned this before. Start three starters pretty much never played. Um, you know, with the exception of Chuku, kinda. Um, so, I mean. You know, and then you get the, uh, you know, I talked to a couple people this, uh, after the game, and I talked to a buddy of mine, and then I talked to you after, 
But then I talked to my mom and I was asking, her, you know, what's what's the feel? What's the feel around there? You know, for Syracuse fans, uh, she hangs out at some of the local spots and um, she was basically saying that, you know, like a lot of people are really pissed at Jim Beheim. They don't feel like he's in it. Um, they don't they don't feel like, you know, he should even be there. They think a lot of people think, you know, he should have retired and, and Mike Hopkins should be coaching the team. And I, I would just disagree. First of all, when you put things into perspective, the 50,000 foot view, we were, we're just coming off of three years of sanctions. So yeah. he didn't want to leave a coach, lay sanctions in a coach's lap. You know, a lot of Syracuse fans have that mentality of, you know, they they flip their lid real quick. Yeah. And yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I mean. And in, in, in Joe, when I mentioned it to you, when I mentioned it to you, you mentioned to me, and I totally forgot about this, and I bet you, I wonder how many other people forgot about this. Torian Thompson was supposed to be there. Yep. And he decided to leave before the season started. And it's funny because I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he's like, oh, next year looks good, though. Next year looks good. And I'm like, well, it's really funny that you say, you know, next year looks good, and you're giving up on him this year, and that you'll be a fan next year. That's pretty funny because that's the first year where we get all our scholarships back. I mean, yeah. I mean, come on. Talk about fair weather fan. You know? Yeah. Well, the scholarship the sanctions definitely hurt us because it didn't allow us to grow depth. You know, I mean, I just remember growing up, Syracuse, they were always would bring in, you know, two, three, four different freshmen, depending on how many people stayed. And you'd always have a decent amount of seniors, you know, experienced guys. And, uh, you know, a couple guys would come in, see if they fit. Some would transfer. Some would, you know, get a little bit of playing time. But there was always some some red shirts. And, you know, there was always just guys that you could at least were reliable off the bench that, that could come in and, and still make plays. You know, guys like Josh Pace for the championship team, stuff like that. Uh, we've always had guys like that. And this these sanctions have, have hurt, hurt that for us. Um, yeah. You know, we just can't we can't build the depth. So now he's trying to recruit for immediate impact and he's going and getting graduate transfers and, um, you know, just trying to, you know, what we talked about last year, you know, with Gillen and Andrew White with just, you know, patching a hole. And, you know, this year with Torian Thompson transferring late and then Geno Thorpe coming in and then him <clears throat> deciding that it wasn't a good fit after a couple games. I mean, right there, you look at this team and what they're lacking, and, and those two guys would have fulfilled it. So, and then on top of the fact of all the freshmen and expectations, uh, I just didn't think the expectations were that high. And then they went, and I think they overexceeded expectations in the non-conference, and that's what created this. I mean, people have to understand what we've lost, and um, that this team is still just—I mean—growing every single day, just growing. And and that was one of the things that I. I when I listened to Jim Beheim's press conference, that's kind of what I got out of it. You know, sometimes if he's got some older teams, experienced teams, whatever, he's not really worried about. I mean, he would be worried about it if they were losing and, he, you know, he had guys that he knew have been there and should know what they're doing. But considering the expectations and the guys he has and how hard they've been fighting and how close games, I mean, what our record could be with a couple points here, a play here, a call there, like, it's just he's you can tell he's not upset. He's not worried. And he, I feel like they're playing or probably exceeding his expectations, considering what he thought coming in. So yeah, you had the one flop against Notre Dame, in my opinion. In my opinion, well, th I that think Notre, Notre Dame probably should have been a must win and probably Florida State probably should have been, too. But again, I don't think it's going to be a bad loss just with the circumstances home or away when you're missing those guys. I mean, you got to, you got to take advantage of that. So those are two big ones for me, but either way, like I said, we're still not in a bad position and with these games coming up. So, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of fair weather fans. Uh, I mean, there's never going to, you're never going to be able to look back and see in hindsight, you know, everyone's just going to wonder, 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 don't, but we never know what would have happened. Don't give up though, is my, is my thing. Don't just, don't just kick them to the curb and be like, they suck. Jim Beheim needs to retire. What's he doing here? I mean, he's right. Well, there was never any guarantee that Mike Hopkins is going to be as good as him anyway. And sometimes replacing a guy like that when you've been there for so long, and that's just difficult. You know, I, I feel like he really wanted to go and create his own legacy. And I also think that, um, Beheim wanted to coach his son. I, and I that, think well, that I think, a little bit to yeah. do with it too. So, yeah. I, th I think I think there was a behind the the scenes uh, conversation with Hopkins and Beheim, and 
I don't think there's any ill will or anything towards that. I just feel like no, I doubt it. People are just sick of Bayheim, and you know how it is now nowadays. It's instant gratification, and things get outdated in a year. And next thing you know, you know, it's just people want to see new stuff. And I just feel like there's probably a lot of people out there that are just sick and tired of the old two three zone and the old coach that's been yes. there for 40 plus years you know they just wanted yes, to see yeah. a change and they probably saw that as a way to get a change bring in a new face like mike hopkins and they look like they we probably blew it but nothing was guaranteed so no and you know we 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 have harped so hard on syracuse in their scoring and they go and lay a big goose egg at Notre Dame. They score 49 points. Guess, well, I mean, you probably know, Joe. They, they scored 53 points in the second half of the FSU game. Yeah. In the second half. We went into the locker room at the end of the first half, down by 10. And, yep. they, and they had the momentum coming out. They hit the, they hit the shot when, as, as the clock expired. I mean, there is a... There, there is a difference between having a team that can't fight themselves out of a wet paper bag and a team that just does not give up no matter what. And the only reason they slowed down against FSU is be, is was pure lack of stamina, dude. They just ran out of gas. I mean, yeah. they did, you know, Tyus Battle just ran out of gas. And we wrong had, people fouled out. We had three starters on sitting on the bench. So, yeah. Um, and all in all, that, that can really only help us. And it can only really help the growth as well for this team and this, uh, the young players. Um, that's really kind of the way that I look at it. Playing in these games, they're going to have games like this for the rest of the year. Uh, so yeah. they're going to have, I mean, it's going to get to a point where they're just, they're used to it, you know, and they're going to know how to, how to handle themselves and what to do in those type of situations and hopefully that just helps us uh later on down the road this season let's just hope that we can win enough games uh in the meantime to stay in the tournament hunt because at the end of the day with the tournament you just got to get in you know so yeah you just got you just got to get that ticket punched and then anything can happen any any type of run can go on you know as we saw a couple years ago as uh to, to quote my good buddy joe there's going to be a lot of games like this. It all depends on how they finish. And that's it. Bottom line. Uh, that's it. That's all I got on FSU, Joe. Any final thoughts? No, sir. All Just right. put that one behind us. All right. FSU in the rearview mirror. All right, Joe. Pitt. We're back at the Dome. Finally. Before. Uh, it feels like forever. It's only been two games, but it feels forever because we've lost four in a row. Um, Pitt comes yep. into the Dome uh, t- uh, Tuesday night at 9 o'clock, and um, they're one of the worst teams in the ACC, along with us, to be co- quite honest with you, as far as the record goes. Joe, what do we expect uh, from Pittsburgh? I wouldn't expect too much. <laughs> I know that we're not – I'm not trying to be mean. I know that we're not um, – we're not at the top of the ACC, but again, like I said, uh, we're still right there in the biddings for a, a tournament type team. Um, looked at uh, Ken Palm today, and uh, he has us at 46 still. Uh, he has Pittsburgh at 202. Holy smokes! Yeah, so Pittsburgh's eight and ten overall. They're 0 and five in the Big East, um, and it's just been it's been rough for the, them. The They've uh, <laughs> it's been rough nonetheless they had lost a, a senior laden team they lost a lot of guys last year and then um on one of their better players that were supposed to return uh he actually i think was a graduate transfer and transferred to uh north carolina and they just <laughs> didn't really have the, the best um Recruiting class, uh, Stallings is having a tough little go uh, at Pitt trying to uh, replace Jamie Dixon. Um, but, yeah, again, like I said, they've been struggling. And uh, just this past week it was announced that um, Ryan Luther, who is their, their best returning player, uh, who's top, usually the first or second in every category on their team, um, he uh, is out. I think he broke – he did something to his foot, but they're saying he's out for the season. Um, so – They've really only been um, 
relying on the, I mean, he doesn't even have a real starting five. They've been relying on uh, different players trying to, to figure out what in the world they're doing. Um, <laughs> and he's, he's admitted that it's pretty tough and I, I just don't see any way that we are going to lose this game. Um, okay. Well here, I got a question for you. We play Pitt two out of the next three games. Yeah. Uh, how do we screw it up? How do you sc- how do you screw this up? Um, well, how I was just talking all positive about still being in a tournament and still having a chance to you know we're twelve and six and albeit we've been close and we didn't get a lot of these wins but they were against better you know good teams. Uh, I mean, hell, even Notre Dame they almost beat North Carolina. Probably should have beat North Carolina on Saturday with the same guys out. So. Uh, we've just been playing against good teams and Pittsburgh is not only the worst team, but they might be the worst team out of all the power five conferences. And we just keep, these are games we can't lose. Um, oh, absolutely. again, yeah. again, they, they, they rely on, uh, Stevenson and, uh, a, a, ju- a transfer that sat out last year's junior Jared Wilson frame, uh, Jared Wilson frame guy. Um, I was reading an article today. That in conference play, when he's on the court, he shoots 42% of the shots. So that's pretty much the guy, and they shoot a lot of threes. Uh, they got, I think, three guys that think shoot somewhere around 37 or at least over 37%. So I just don't see – the only thing they're going to do is probably go out there and pass the ball around and just huck up some threes. I don't know if they got a guy that they can throw in the middle of the zone to make those plays or – a guy that uh, replaced Ryan Luther. So um, just overall, just with experience and the fact that some of the injuries and they're just not, they're going through a transition over there in Pittsburgh with that coaching change. And it's just not good. And this year I'm, I'm glad we play them twice. Uh, we have them at home and then we have Boston college at home who right now is actually currently beating Florida state by 12 um, with five minutes to go. Where's, uh, that? Then, Where's that at? Yep. Yep. And then we go to, Pittsburgh those are our next three games so to me if this this could be the turnaround point of the season you know we've played some tough games we should be able to have the confidence and now um we go into some games where I mean I I was reading today I think right now we're like a 17 point favorite in Vegas so these next three games I think we got to win and that would put us at 15 and 6 and we'd have uh, what our next game would be at Georgia Tech before Virginia comes and plays at the Dome. So yes. it would be nice to get a nice little three win stretch and um, and then try to win four in a row against Georgia Tech. Uh, those are some of the more manageable teams in you know, Georgia Tech, Boston College, uh, Pittsburgh that are, are in the ACC. Um, and then, you know, turn around and try to give it a go against Virginia. Um, and I know we have a a later game against Wake Forest at home in the season, which I feel like we, uh, we got to get to. So um, there's certain games because we didn't pick up some of these wins against Notre Dame and Florida state that now are pretty much, you know, kind of must wins. I know there's still some chances out there. We play North Carolina and Duke at the end of the year. We still got Louisville and Miami and Clemson still got a chance to beat some good teams, you know, Virginia at home again. But these other games we have to we have to take advantage of, and it starts starts tomorrow night at nine, and um, hopefully we can come out and uh, do what we're supposed to do, because I don't really see a Pittsburgh team that should be able to should be able to to beat us. Yep. So we got we got Pittsburgh Tuesday night prime prime time nine o'clock, and then we go a, an entire week off, eight days off, um, play well play Boston College. Um, in the dome, so uh, no travel, nothing. Get rested up, uh, be a nice little break. If we can pull out this win, get fresh legs for Boston College, and then um, a couple days after Boston College, we go to Pitt. So a nice little lull in um, some of the 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 action. Uh, a much needed um, kind of a I don't want to say a break, but a much needed. Um, at least a little bit of rest at home after this pit game. So, um, yeah. And uh, another good thing too with that is with Boston College is while we have a whole week off, Boston College um, three days before we play them has a game at Louisville. So we're gonna have a fresher turnaround anyway for that. Well, hopefully, and, uh, go ahead. 
I was saying, and they're playing tonight, so they would have already played two games since the last time that we. Oh, no, no, one. it'd probably be three. Oh yeah, one. Yeah, you're right. Um, but either way, like I said, I mean, they had that one. It's a turnaround, and Louisville is not going to be an easy game. So. Yep. So all right. Well, we will get back here after after the pit game. Um, we'll try to be as quick as we can, as, as always. Hopefully, we can come back and celebrate and crack, crack some beers to Panther Tears. Uh, we'll see. So It's going to be tough. If we lose this game, it's going to be tough. We haven't had a bad loss yet. I mean, the only close loss that we've had is a semblance of, of a bad loss is probably the Notre Dame game. But yeah. um, who knows what they're going to even end up doing. So if they end up being up there, top 25 tournament team, then it's probably not that bad of a loss either. So uh, – we just we got to win this. We have to win this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I my think, me personally, I think we need the next three. Yeah, you know? I was just going to say. If we that. lose, then it's going to be very, very difficult to have a positive, um, to have a positive feeling about the rest of the season. So. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's it. Episode fifty-one. The books. We'll get back here um, as soon as we can uh, after pit. So that's all I got. Remember, go to facebook.com forward slash. Q's Nation podcast. Thumb us up there if you haven't already. And that's all. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Later. Hey. You just heard the Q's Nation podcast with Sean and Joe.